What's up, YouTube? Thrift Hunter here. Going to go through some gold jewelry that I found um, last week and maybe two weeks ago now since it's been a little while. Uh, I've got some nice stuff, uh, nothing too crazy. Uh, I've got some really nice stuff coming, but I've got a couple of nice pieces. And I'm going to show some chronograph watches. I have three chronograph watches, and I'll talk to you a little bit about those and kind of what I paid for those and what they're worth. Um, we'll start with just some, some jewelry pieces, I guess. Uh, I've got a little box here of some jewelry and I'll just kind of show you what I bought. Some of this I bought just as scrap. Like here's some sterling here that I got with, uh, some gold. I bought some, some gold scrap jewelry and, and it had some sterling with it too. I, I don't really buy that much sterling anymore, but, uh. Sometimes I see it just grouped together with the gold. And I think the gold paid for, you know, everything. So these were just extra. But nice little sterling pieces there. <clears throat> Here's a big gold bracelet that I bought. This is just scrap. <clears throat> this is 16 grams. And it's got a little heart charm with some rubies in there, small ones. You know, nice charm bracelet. It has like a little bit of damage to the link here, but it's it's uh, marked on that end and marked on this end. Fourteen carat, nice heavy gold piece. Paid a lot for this, like five hundred bucks or something. It was a little bit expensive, but not too bad. The price of gold's down, silver's down, uh, but you know it happens. Uh, hoping it goes back up, obviously, but I'll be selling a lot of this gold today, so it won't really matter. A lot of it I got good deals on, so I'll show you like a pair of earrings. Um, these weren't that great of a deal either. Hey, what's up? How's it going? Here's some 14 karat gold earrings. Pretty nice. Um, the person weighed these and said they weighed five grams, and they weigh about four and a half. 4.6 or so um, so they were a little light but I gave them a pass on that because uh, it's pretty close <clears throat> a lot of people I see on eBay using a kitchen scale or something and gosh those those kitchen scales those like the big Accutex scales I mean I have one um, those have like eighth of a, uh, an ounce uh, tolerance or whatever so I mean they can be way off on the weight so sometimes I buy stuff that I can see is not weighed with a proper jewelry scale. Um, and sometimes it works out in my favor and sometimes it doesn't. Here's an interesting pair of earrings. I don't know. They're huge um, lapis earrings with, you know, Omega backs. 14 karat gold. They weigh 19 grams. So they were heavy. I paid uh, 240 for these. And it was just like, ah, I think it's, I think it's good enough. Um, same thing, kind of like the other lap, <clears throat> lapis stuff that I bought, the lapis bracelet and the brooch, is that I would prefer to sell these uh, as pieces, but they are really big, and I don't know who would, who would wear these. I mean, they're they're big, but you never know. People have different tastes, I guess. Yeah. Hopefully around half, something like that. We'll see. Nice little lapis earrings, but, you know. I thought it was a good deal, so I bought it. Let's see what else I got in here. Just these. I already took the, the pearls off of these. 14 karat um, earrings with screwbacks. I was kind of worried that maybe the screwbacks wouldn't be gold, but they're gold as well. So the whole thing's gold. These were these are nine grams and they were two hundred twenty five dollars and they had pearls on them and took the pearls off and now they're eight point six grams. So it really wasn't a lot of pearl weight, but people will sometimes discount a little bit too much than they should. Um, so yeah, I did pretty well on these. Those were pretty nice, you know. Just other stuff. I've taken a lot of this apart already, like this. This is just a gold little necklace, and it had some stones in it. 
right here. Still a diamond in the center there, but it's just too small and I don't really want to take it out. Had some topaz in there. Took the topaz out, saved what didn't break. And this was all of 60 bucks, and it's like four grams or something like that. So this was a great deal, but just scrap for me. Um, not really a great piece. Uh, here's an interesting one. This is a ring, and this one I'm a little, like, I'm, I'm pretty on the fence with this. So this is marked 14 karat Italy right there. And, uh, it's like, right, even when I bought it, I kind of knew, like, this looks like a resin piece. Um, I don't know if you guys, how familiar, familiar people are with the gold over resin. Yeah, like, this stone is definitely, um, like, a rhinestone or whatever, so it looks very junky, but it, it's gold, but I don't know if it's, uh, if it's hollow or if it's gold over resin. Um, it weighs like five grams, five and a half grams or something, which is maybe a little heavy for what it should be, <clears throat> but it's kind of, yeah, this one's weird. But when I like, when I hit it, it sounds hollow. Like it doesn't sound like there's anything in there. So anyway, there might be resin in here. And so this, I'm going to have to cut in half. Like there's just no, I wish I could sell it as a piece or something, but it's like I, I have to cut it in half to see if it's resin. It just says 14 karat Italy. It doesn't say resin on it, but um, sometimes these things are. And it, and the the reason why I think that is because of the how this design is done here, and just the way it, it kind of like doesn't crush. Like if this was just straight hollow, it should it should just like be very flimsy and kind of crush. So I'm gonna have to cut this in half and see what's inside. I'm guessing there's resin. If there is resin, then there is um, very little gold in here, like half a gram or something. But if uh, if it's just hollow, then I have five grams of gold. So it's, you know, a bit of a gamble. Um, yeah, definitely hollow. I hope so. One of the things I'm looking at is there's those little holes. There's little holes in the corners. And there's little um, holes in the bottom of the band here. And typically with the resin pieces, you would be able to like see the resin. So it's almost like they cast it uh, over resin and then melted the resin out is, wh is what I'm thinking. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Just that little rhinestone in the top too kind of throws me off. But, you know, there could have been a diamond in there and someone took it out and glued it, that in. I don't know. Interesting piece, though. Uh, paid uh, 70 bucks for this. So if it's hollow, if it's hollow and it's all gold, then we're good. And if it's not, then I lose whatever 40 bucks on it or something. So it's pretty, pretty good gamble. Uh, I'll be okay either way. I'm not too worried about it. Here's some, just some little jade, 14 karat gold jade cufflinks. And uh, they're marked 14 karat on there somewhere. On the end there. Small cufflinks, but these were like 90 bucks or 100 bucks. And they weigh like 5 or 6 grams. I don't know. Again, nice pieces though. I mean, but maybe not that good for, for uh, scrap. I should cut into it live. Eh. Uh, I don't have any of my tools out right now. And I'll just deal with it later. Sorry. Um... Hey, living the good life. How's it going? Good to see ya. Nice Tuesday. I was trying to go to the uh, tire store and get my tires changed, but you have to have an appointment. Here's a, uh, a pretty good score here. Um, this is a, you know, uh, what is it? A topaz or a smoky quartz, sorry. Or topaz, I guess. I'm not sure, but... Another um, one of these big kind of big stone Victorian rings. I still have the, the amethyst one. But uh, this just has really, really nice detail. This was 100 bucks, And uh, I forget what this weighs. It's like 9 or 10 grams. It's, it's quite a bit. And you can see it's, it needs a little bit of a cleaning. And it's... Uh, it's a small size too. It's like a five or a five and a half. So it would be nicer if it was a little bit um, bigger. 
there's the 14 karat mark in there, and I tested it, and it's gold. Nice old, old piece. Nice, good quality. But it's a big, uh, big piece. And I just saw that in the pictures. No weight listing. It just looked big, so I bought it. Hello, Sherry. How's it going? There's that piece. Um, the rest of the stuff in here is just scrap stuff that I have. And I have some other pieces too, but... This stuff's just, just scrap stuff. I actually got... This was kind of funny. These two rings, <clears throat> both 14 karat gold, I paid $6 on eBay for these. And someone shipped them to me in an envelope for like 60 cents or something. Should sell. Yeah, it's a good piece. And then just some more... Oh, here's a silver a little dolphin. That the silver, and you know these whatever the grandma charms and the the little anchor pieces and just a bunch of junk really. Little dolphin piece. Some of it's ten carat. Some of it's uh, fourteen. Most of it was fourteen. I bought this whole scrap lot as uh, mixed ten and fourteen. And uh, most of it was 14, which was actually kind of a surprise that a lot of it was 14 instead of 10. Because usually when you get a mix lot, it's mostly 10 karat. So, yeah, some scrap there. And then the best piece that I have, probably gold-wise, is this. And so this is a nice, they call this, a, I guess, a lavalier necklace. And it's like uh, 30 inches or something. And this was a really good deal. This is from someone who I bought uh, a few pieces off of now. And sometimes they price stuff really cheap. And then sometimes it's really expensive. So uh, this one was, was pretty cheap. It was 388 bucks, And there's about $600 in gold here. So... Yeah, nice piece. Uh, this weighs 17 grams, something like that. It's really nice. Um, I'd really like to sell this as a piece, but I don't know if I'm going to because uh, just it would. I would have to get too much for it. I'd have to get like a thousand bucks for it to be even worth it to list, and I just don't see that happening. Sorry, that it's swinging, but it's marked 14 karat on the back there, and I tested it, and you can pretty much see that it's gold. And I've got two more pieces coming from the seller uh, next week, so it uh, should be nice. Is this hollow? No, th this one isn't hollow at all. This is all solid. For sure. Nice piece. I'm not sure what stones those are. I think they're just topaz, but they do kind of look like aqua. But I'm going to guess topaz on that. So there's those gold stuff, and then I'm just going to talk about some of the uh, chronograph watches that I bought, and I'm going to start out with the kind of the junked out one that I did for my thumbnail. This is a chronograph Suisse. That's all it says on the dial. It doesn't have like a brand name necessarily, and this I have all the parts for, so let me show you. Here's like the outer part of the case, and here's the back, case back, where it says 18 karat gold on the back. See that? And I've got the dust cover. This was really hard to get off, this dust cover. Look at how, look at the dirty spot on it. This is just metal, uh, brass. The pushers and the hands. The hands are beat. And here's what the uh, movement looks like. And a 17 joule chronograph. Uh, so this one's a little bit interesting. Um, I'm going to go over a little bit about the watches. So it's a, it's a little bit technical, I guess. Um, so for those who don't like that, sorry. Um, this is, I believe, a Venus. It's the, the movement is called like the Venus 172 or something like that. And uh, it's got the, the dual registers, but they're uh, in the top and in the bottom. 
and then it's got the outer part there. Uh, just a really nice dial, right? Like a salmon, nice kind of rose dial. It's a really nice um, watch, but this one is beat. Um, I don't know if it's running. I don't have a, a crown, or I guess I could get a crown to test it to see if it's running, but um, this one needs a lot of work. And there's the movement. And the thing about this one, so this this one was cheap. It was uh, 250 bucks. I just I, I don't know 250 bucks with the gold and everything i just had i had to buy it i think it was a, a good deal it definitely was but these this case is so light there is barely any 18 karat gold in here at all um it, it's pretty sad how much gold is in here like i thought there would be a little bit more let me see if i can even show you what it would look like kind of in the case and uh, there's about six and a half grams of 18 karat gold in here. Uh, how much is in the case back? Yeah, this is a, uh, does it have a Landeron movement? No, it's not a Landeron. I actually have two that are Landeron that I'm going to show you. But uh, I think it's a Venus 172 or Venus, Venus something. That's the style. And that's the, the movement in there. The case back's like two grams. And then this is like four or four and a half grams. Very light, so just be careful about when you're buying uh, chronographs. Um, some of them, like it looks like it has a lot of weight, but even even the lugs here are hollowed out. I mean, look at that. That there is just almost no gold in here, and even this um, even this stuff is pretty beat up. It's all dented and worn. Uh, I would love to to have someone put this back together as it's a pretty nice like project watch and and in good condition put together running and everything like that. It's a thousand dollar chronograph, but this one is so far beat. So it's the dial is like maybe a little bit bent. The hands are bent. It needs pushers. It, the case is dented. It's pretty far gone i would love for someone to to um be able to do something with it but i don't know i think it's going to be more more of a parts thing and a scrap piece like scrap out the gold and and uh sell off the parts sell off this movement together uh like you it, you could put it back together for sure like you could but it, it would i mean it's going to take I don't know, 40, 50 hours into, and then even when you're done, it's still not going to be that great. So <laughs> I don't know. I just don't think it's a really one that's worth it to restore or, you know, try and do something with, but we'll see. I'm going to talk to my gold guy, uh, one of my buyers and just see, uh, definitely a project piece, hardly gone. Mm. Yeah. But you have to understand like there's other options. There's other projects you could work on and, I don't know if that's the one I would want to take on because the dial is nice, but it's pretty worn too. Uh, man, I don't know. You could, someone could, but I couldn't, I couldn't mess with something like that. Um, we're going to show you this next chronograph. Uh, this is an interesting, uh, these are also interesting purchases. I'm not a big watch um, dealer or anything like that. I buy a lot of watches, but I, I don't, I'm not a watch guy really or anything. I mean, you guys can see I don't wear any jewelry. I don't have any watches or anything. I mean, I have a couple watches, but I don't really wear them. Um, so here's this one. So this one is stainless and gold plated. So it's not um, not a solid gold watch. Definitely a lot bigger and heavier and everything like that. Um, this one you can see there is running. There's some spotting there. I don't know if that's on the dial or what. I imagine it's on the dial. Um, how much for the size of the tote? The this one. What was it? This one. This one is probably in the 200 225 dollar range, something like that. Is what this is uh, worth. Uh, this one's called a lighter. Let me show you which is basically a no-name brand right i mean it's basically no one's really heard of it but it's a nice two register chronograph one of the things with chronographs is you typically want um a three register chronograph they're worth more having the three register but you know some of the 
functions are working. Some of them aren't. I don't know what's going on with this one. But there's the reset and set. But you can see sometimes it's running, sometimes it's not. Definitely a little project piece. Again, this I paid uh, 300 bucks for. I'm hoping I can get off this case back to show you with just my hands here. And uh, let me take this off. Case back. So this is a the, one of those type of case backs that you need a little tool for. And uh, it's just got these prongs and then it, you twist this off. It wasn't that hard to get off. But here's the, the movement on this one. And this one is a Landeron movement. So if you're not familiar with the Landeron movements, they're basically <clears throat> like kind of a generic chronograph um, movement from Switzerland. Really not the best um, that you can get. You really want a Valjoux movement or something with some complications or, or a date or a three register or something, something, something. But um, for 300 bucks, I thought it was an okay deal. I don't think there's a lot of room on this. This is probably a $350 to $400 chronograph. Um, this is the, the Lander on 187, I believe. Uh, not starting consistently. Yeah, I mean, it, it runs. So it, it's good enough, but you can see that the this is a little bit dirty. This just needs to be cleaned and serviced. It doesn't really need that much, really. But uh, yeah, it does... All the chronographs typically have some kind of an issue, some kind of an issue, right? They're either miss, missing a pusher, they're, they're, uh, they won't set properly, or their reset's a little bit off-center, or something, something, something with these things. And that's why condition's really important, and that's why um, some of these you'll see go for, uh, you know, $1,500, $2,000, and then other ones go for uh, $250 bucks. Because the condition means a lot on these, on if everything's functioning or not. But overall, this one just it looks nice, and I kind of liked it because it had the date and the um, kind of the blue outer part here. And overall, it's a pretty nice looking watch. Going rate two fifty three fifty for service. Oh yeah, I mean uh, service on a chronograph is going to be pretty expensive, but uh, you can also find people that will, will do it for cheaper. Um, if you go to certain watch shops, like you go into a Chinatown or something and you tell them you want it serviced, uh, sometimes they can do it for cheaper because they're moving a little bit bigger volume. But yeah, any kind of like a, if you want a chronograph specialist, like master watchmaker to really completely restore this for sure, it's going to cost you a lot of money. Um, uh, that's, you know, but as far as just having it taken apart and cleaned and lubricated, someone can knock that out in an hour if they do a bunch of them. So it's really not too bad for, depends on how much service it needs. If you find a chronograph, you contact me. Here's the, here's the other one that I'm going to show you guys. Oh, got it upside down. This one is uh, 18 karat gold. So this one's a little bit nicer. It's actually a lot nicer, I think. This one's uh, an Agari. Again, basically a no-name brand. Same movement as the uh, the other one that I showed you in stainless. But this one is is good. I like this one a lot. I, I paid um, $430 for this one. So quite a bit of money, but really not that bad for a, a solid gold chronograph. And this one is, is working um, a lot better than the other ones. Let me see if I can get it to run for you guys. Yeah, there it goes. So this one's got... No problems running or anything. A lot nicer dial. The dial's very clean. Case is very clean. Not not all beat up. It's got a little bit of a dent right there, but it's not that bad. And this one's 18 karat. And this one has a lot more 18 karat gold in it than the other one. And uh, you can just see that by the, you know, like I showed you on the other one. This one's got solid lugs. And uh, just the overall weight of the, the watch is pretty heavy. And, uh, yeah, this one I would put, you know, again, not a lot of room. I think this is probably more in the, you could get six to 800 for this probably. Um, might be a little bit tough. I, I don't think I'm going to get that much for it. When I sell it, I'll probably sell this for like 
I don't know, I'll try and get 550 or something. Uh, give the, the next guy a little bit of room to make some money. But this one's working fine, and it looks a lot nicer. And this probably has uh, something like 10 grams of gold, 18 karat in it. So, yeah, it's like $440, probably just in gold. Um, so I, I'm really happy with this one. I was actually expecting them to be a little bit more beat up than they are. Um, this one I opened up and it, it looks really clean and it's a nice size. I actually, I really like this one. So I don't know if I'm going to, I'll probably sell it. I mean, honestly, I don't really keep these kind of things that much, but it actually fits me pretty well and looks nice. I mean, that's, that's a nice crown. So I'm really happy with this one. Not a complicated movement, not the greatest piece in the world, but nice piece. Uh, I'm definitely happy with that one. And then I just have one more watch. I'll show you guys this is just a uh, Hamilton Phenomatic and this one I believe is running this one I couldn't get open so yeah this one's another kind of start and stopper it does run but needs a little bit to get going this one I couldn't get open uh, I'm not really sure how to open this one I think this one's like uh, this is like a pressure fit it's got an engraving on the back, and it's marked 14 karat gold. But see this this backing? I can't get this off, and there's like little indentations here. So I do not know how to get this one off. I, there's no uh, like lever point anywhere on there, and but it, it looks like it's a pressure like snap fit one. So I'm guessing you just need like a good good case knife or something should open it. Moon case open from the crystal. Yeah, but usually the ones that open from the crystal, uh, you can get the crystal off, right? Like the bezel. But this one, I don't see, there's like not even a seam on the bezel to get it off. Two-part stem. Interesting. How do you get the stem out? Is this where you have to like pull it out and then it'll it'll come off or something? I'm not sure. Do you know how to get it off? It doesn't really matter to me. I mean, I, I don't really care. I don't really need to get it apart um, because I'll just sell it as is. But there should be a fair amount of gold in this. Um, crystal puller. All right, yeah, yeah. Interesting. I guess it has a little maybe an edge on the crystal. Maybe pull it out. I don't know. I can't get it off, so I'm not going to mess with it. But this was uh, 225 bucks, and there should be... Uh, pretty close to four hundred dollars worth of gold in here, I would think. It's a, it's definitely a thicker case, uh, maybe three fifty in gold, but you can see these selling online all day on eBay for between three fifty and four hundred bucks. And I've seen one pretty similar taken apart that had twelve grams in it, so I think that's at least in the ballpark for this one. I had another thematic like last week, and it was it was about twelve grams of gold in it, so I think that's pretty close for this one. It's got short, little stubby lugs, but nice watch. People like the ones that say uh, Masterpiece on them. This is a Hamilton Masterpiece cinematic, so people kind of like those. But, yeah, that's everything for um, this week. I'm going to be selling this, most of the stuff today. Some of it I will be putting online at some point. <clears throat> I really need to get listing on eBay, but uh, just, I don't know. I've been busy with other stuff. and. Uh, I have some really great stuff coming in next week. Um, looks like, let's see, some stuff got shipped. I bought uh, some coins I got coming, some sterling coins. Got some a nice 14 karat gold set, a couple of 14 karat gold rings, 14 karat bracelet coming, um, some earrings, another 14 karat bracelet, and then I bought a big necklace, bracelet, and earring set. But uh, always need to be uh, get there buying some more. I uh, just got a Hamilton Automatic 14 karat, also working on off listed for 4.99. Is that high? No, it's not high. Uh, automatics are typically bigger and heavier. Um, to be honest, with the with the watches, a lot of the values in the gold uh, is just, especially if it's not running. Um, it's it's really sad to just rip out the movements and pop out the crystal and scrap the gold, but 
a lot of the times that's what happens unless you got something kind of special the the generic um even the, these hamilton hamiltons they made tons and tons and tons of these and i tell this to people a lot gold prices are so high that it's just like wh where else is the value i mean that's what i talk about like with this big nice big gold chain like there's just so much gold value in here like uh, could you sell it as a piece sure but you could buy this um this same exact thing in gold plated that looks like, just exactly like this to anyone else like no one no normal people don't really notice these things that if it's real gold or not you could buy this for 50 cents in, in gold plated right so where's the value is there design value to this not really i don't think there's a lot of design value i mean it's a little bit but not really um there's nothing interesting different uh designer name attached to this or anything like that so the value the, the money value is in the gold like uh, i'm sorry that i uh you know that people don't like when i scrap a lot of things but that that's just my explanation is you can buy this exact same thing if i told you these were gold plated and a dollar uh it, it'd be the same you know but the value is in the gold so uh and gold's uh, $1,900 an ounce. I mean, that's historically very, very high. Um, gold, you know, typically or historically has been, what, around 1200 bucks, maybe 800 bucks um, an ounce. So right now we're, we're at pretty high levels for gold, um, which, uh, you know, take it however you want. And maybe it's going much higher. It could be $5,000 an ounce. But um, the fact is, is that there's so much value in such a little bit of space um, that it makes sense to scrap a lot of pieces, even though you may not want to. Um, do I have an, I don't have an Etsy store. I haven't been doing much online lately. I've been doing a lot of just, um, dealer to dealer stuff. I just know at this point, I've been doing this more than 10 years. So I just know a lot of people <clears throat> that buy jewelry, that run estate sales, that, um, do, etsy or do facebook marketplace or do or do whatever and and i just take my stuff to my my buddies and say here give me this much this much this much i give them enough room to make some money and and we just do a deal um a lot of times it's just easier but so i will put stuff online i have a whole box full of stuff i need to put online there's uh i've been busy buying i, I need to buy more i already uh uh need to be buying more. I only have eight pieces on the way or something like that. And, uh, yeah, I really just need to be buying some more. Uh, if you scrap, save the old straps, especially at the branded gold fill, always looking for original ones for my watches. Yeah. If they're in good condition, a lot of the time the straps aren't in good condition. And, uh, I know which ones to save. I know what you're talking about. Like some, some nice vintage original ones, but like, um, the, the one that's on this chronograph is nothing. I mean, there's no, it's not a nice band or anything. It's, it's cheap. It's falling apart. It's, uh, yeah, just not worth saving. These are just brand new replacements. Um, if it was like a good vintage watch with a nice, like, like a gold buckle or something like that, or it was an original, like Ulova Accutron one, or, you know, some kind of original branding, of course, I would uh, keep those or sell it with the watch. But I actually cut off um, cut off the band off of this one. It was, it was a cheap band and it smelled bad. So <laughs> I don't know. I, like, I don't want that. So I just took it off and trash it. Because, um, yeah, people send you some weird stuff online. Uh, anyway, that, that's going to be it for today. Um, I hope to do another video later this week, maybe Friday or Saturday or something. I just... I don't know when stuff's going to come in. Um, maybe I'll try and save packages for a package opening, but it's usually pretty difficult for me to, to save the packages. I always want to open them right away. So uh, have a good rest of your week, guys. I'm going to get back to work and get back to doing a bunch of stuff with all of this jewelry that I have right now. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.